skills for open source folks. Uh, does anyone here ever give a talk at a conference or a user group or, or anything like that? You have. I've been a mm -hmm. member of Toastmasters for years. Ah, well, I'll mention them in a little bit. Okay, um, for those who don't know me, I'm Dave Stokes. Uh, I've been a MySQL community manager for eight years. I speak between 25 and 40 times a year. Uh, one time in my career, I was a stand-up comic, which was great training for uh, being a project evangelist at a lot of conferences. Uh, I've been speaking at computer conferences off and on for 30 years since I was in college and spoke about porting Ultrix 11 to a PDP 1160 at a Digital Equipment Corporation User Society meeting. You Your guys what hurts? Pardon? Your what hurts? <laughs> the Digital Equipment User Society? The, before that. Oh, uh, P porting PDP 60 uh, Ultrix 11. It was DEX version of Unix okay. for PDPs. Um, ancient computer company shot itself in the foot and bled to death. Don't, don't worry about any more of the details there. Um, this is not... Uh, to encourage you to do talks like this, but uh, I saw this pop up the other day. I go, oh, I need this. Yeah. Okay, exercise number one. All of you can stand. All of you who can stand, please stand up. Say the word once. 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 Twice. Twice. Okay, now you can sit down. Wait, were we supposed to say once the second time? No, just say the word twice for the second one. So now you can say that you've spoken twice at the at an open source software conference. <laughs> Um, yeah, by the way, you're welcome for that. So, big question I should be asking you is why aren't you speaking here today or why didn't you speak yesterday? And for some of you, it might be glossophobia, fear of public speaking. Um, two ways over that, uh, either never talk or work your way through it. Uh, for most people I run into, it's usually sloth. Oh, I, I meant to put in a paper or I meant to put in a talk. I just never got around to it. So, oops. I want to remind you that if you're thinking of speaking at a conference like this, especially at a conference like this one, your audience wants you to do well. They're not out there waiting to throw beer bottles at you like you are if you're a stand-up comic. Usually you're speaking to peers or pseudo-peers. You're not talking to uh, people who have hiring and firing or pay raise power over you. And it also helps you sharpen your skills. When you start creating a presentation and trying to develop something that's coherent, you often find a gap in your own knowledge. Or someone will ask you a question, you'll have to go, I'll have to get back to you on that. And also, by getting up and talking about your experiences and your knowledge, you're helping other people. So, ironically, humans want to learn from other people. I don't know if you've seen the apes that have been taught sign language. The one thing they don't do is ask questions to gain knowledge. Humans do that. Humans like doing that. Um, people who are even self-taught love to do that. So, you're going to have a, a good audience. Also, there's a lot of uh, voyeurism and rubbernecking. Someone's also an expert in your field, they come to your talk, uh, sometimes they learn something, sometimes they help you out. And also a lot of folks come to a show like this, you know, they might have heard of Kubernetes and they want to find out about it, so there's an excitement of the new. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, how to get started giving a presentation at a show like this. Okay, first talk. Do something small. Uh, find your local user group and see if you can talk on XYZ for five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, half an hour might be stretching it. Uh, local user groups are usually in dire need of content. They want you to come and participate. Um, even if you're just re-entering something that a newbie knows that you just learned, there might be other newbies there who haven't taken that step. Uh, some companies have brown bags at lunch where you sit down and talk about something you just found out. Might help your job, might help you get on a new product. Unconferences at conferences. Some of them have little unscheduled talks where you go talk for five to ten minutes uh, as part of a, a sidetrack to the regular conference. Like I said, five to ten minutes is great. Um, a simple introduction, 
uh, how you manage to implement IP tables for your home network, something like that you can cover fairly simply and get done with. And by the way, you don't need to have all the answers. You just have to show them what you did or what impresses you. Speaking skills. Uh, things I like to tell people to do. By the way, this is often a uh, do as I say, not as I actually do, unfortunately. Speak slower than you normally do. My Australian friends tell me Americans over-enunciate everything. My British friends tell me we don't enunciate enough <coughs> and we mispronounce things besides spelling them wrongly. Uh, when you practice your talk, slow yourself down by half. Now my trouble is I get excited, my mouth runs away and I speed up and it gets horrible. But the slower you speak, the better it gets communicated. If you're speaking to an audience that has a lot of folks who don't speak English as their first language, try to slow down even more. Enunciate. Uh, if you're normal, normally mumbling a lot, practice speaking the words. Try to make eye contact with your audience. Um, unfortunately, in these days of iPhones and Androids everywhere, often what you see is the crown of the head. Dynamics. Change your voice, change your pitch. I don't know if you folks know who the comic Emo Phillips is. Uh, he overdoes it a lot, but he's very popular. He's also very, very funny. Uh, if you don't know who he is, please go out and look up his ultimate joke on religion. Uh, by the way, big hint, go to the restroom before you start, spit out your gum, have hydrogen dioxide or some other drinking material in case you get dry mouth. Uh, there's nothing that really excites an audience like seeing you do the pee pee dance in front of them for 15 minutes while you try to hurry through your material. Practice. Uh, find some time. Go through your presentation at least three times. Uh, if you have a way to, to record yourself, I recommend that. Uh, you will hate your voice, you will hate the way you look, but it might give you some pacing and some content ideas. Well, like I said, thou shalt practice. Practice until you can do it right, and then practice until you can't screw it up. And of course, there's the US Navy's seven Ps down there at the bottom. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Uh, I grew up in a Navy town, so. Stuff can fly. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> slides. <coughs> well, believe it or not, you don't actually need slides all the time. And sometimes I've seen great presentations where, oops. Hey, there go my slides. Um, one of the better presentations I saw last year was a gentleman who, who had lost his computer and a slide deck and couldn't get into his presentation. So he decided to talk about agile programming without slides, it was just a whiteboard. It helps if you have something visual. There's an art to making slides. There's several good books out there. I, I won't recommend one over the other. Uh, but you can get by uh, with things without slides. I have not had to resort to sock puppets yet. I've had a couple times where I've been tempted. <coughs> There's all sorts of slide software out there. Uh, most popular two were probably PowerPoint and Keynote. Uh, Prezi's on the decline. For those of you who get motion sickness, that's a good thing. Um, my preference for the past several years has been Google Slides and Impress. My counterpart from Belgium does a lot of stuff where he does markup to create HTML slides and then turns those into PDFs. Uh, if anyone's interested, come to the MyScale booth. I can show you how we do that. Very quick way of writing big slide decks, but your stage. Uh, I'd, and you're in the open source world, I'd say either Google Slides or Impress. Um, by the way, beware of the wall of text. Um, most audiences, if they see two slides like this in a row, will start snoring. By the way, also check your format. Uh, most slides 
presentations, you'll see at conferences they're 16 by 9. Occasionally you see people from other formats. And by the way, when your slides do go off the end of the screen like that, it tends to upset people. So try not to do that. I'm already struggling just with this one. Yeah. It's, it's visual overload. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, there's, another type, there's another deliberate typo you'll see that's even better. Um, I have to do a lot of talks about databases, which is everyone's favorite subject, right? <laughs> so I actually go and say, this is kind of dry here. I'm going to talk about how the optimizer takes your query and turns it into an execution plan. It is a dry subject. It is Sahara dry, Sahara dry and summer dry. And I try to keep the, the, the raw meat to a minimum per slide. And I'll still get reviews that come back and say the talk was way too technical. You know, it was marked as an advanced talk, but it should have been much more than that. <laughs> and then I'll get some one out of every five that will say, oh, talk wasn't technical enough. You didn't discuss how the, how the uh, compiler actually turns this into object code. Graphics. Graphics are good. Um, the <laughs> trouble is, especially when I see things that are benchmarks, and you see all the nice curves going up like that, um, sometimes they're hard to read from more than just the first row. And also, your graphic might be the best graphic in the world. This has been rated as the best infographic ever written. Mm -hmm. This is Napoleon's army mm -hmm. going to Moscow in the pan and coming back from Moscow. <laughs> Uh, like I said, it's the, considered the best infographic in the world. <laughs> However, the folks in the back, I'm sure you're looking at that going, no. <laughs> that, uh, what language is that? Uh, I think it's in French. Okay. So, plan your presentation. Uh, know your subject, know your time. Uh, there's nothing like having a 50 minute presentation uh, in an hour slot and you don't have any time for Q&A. And they come back and they tell you, oh, yeah, you now have 30 minutes. The first presenter was late. We're trying to get everything back on track. By the way, you're the last guy between all the audience and lunch. <laughs> so <coughs> write down your main points. If your subject has five main points, um, you have five slides there. Five major bullet points go from there. Uh, talk about common problems in software. You know, by the way, if you do this, your system will crater. Or make sure you don't forget the double dash instead of a single dash for passwords. Things like that. Talk about the obvious common problems. And also near the end of your slide deck, put in the reference to the man page or the website for the product or what you're doing. Also, don't try to consume all the time with talk. If you have a 15-minute period and you talk 49 minutes and 30 seconds, leave 30 seconds for Q&A, people aren't going to be happy with you. Audience level. Um, sometimes you walk into an audience and you're doing a beginner's presentation and you realize the folks who wrote the code are all in the audience and they're sitting there smiling at you like tigers and you're raw meat. Um, other times you'll go out and the audience has come to an advanced talk and they barely know how to boot a Macintosh. Um, not making fun of you. Um, <laughs> so you have to be able to judge your audience and sometimes you're going to get bogged down trying to keep up or get down to the level of your audience. Uh, either way is good. Now, as you write down these points, as you come up with your slides, <laughs> keep circling back to the beginning and say, is this talking about what I really want to talk about or have we gone off on a tangent? So, big way to outline things. Subject name and a one-sentence, two-sentence summary of what you want to do. Uh, what are the important features? that you want to cover. Uh, what options do you like? Which options don't you like? Which options you should never use? Uh, common usage. Uh, MySQL Utilities has a uh, nice little Python script called dbcopy, or MySQL dbcopy. I run into people all the time that are taking their database, they're saving it with MySQL dump, SCPing the file over, pulling this file back. I say use MySQL dbcopy, get it all done with one step, and yes, you can put it in a script. And once again, pointer to the reference material, you know, the man pages, website, maintainer's email, that sort of thing. Live demos. Um, as I say here, like magic tricks, they work really well. If not, you have a dead lady cut in half in the stage. It's not impressive. 
Um, do not depend on a conference Wi-Fi. Uh, the only show I will say that is not true about is the Southern California Linux Expo. They overcompensate and they have the best conference Wi-Fi ever. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Every other show, the Wi-Fi is be considered suspect. Now, your demo might have worked 10 minutes before out in the lobby or out on a bench and you walk into the room and there's a bad spot in the room and it's gonna be right where you're presenting from. Uh, sometimes it helps to pre-record what you're doing. I know several folks that actually look very clever and you can actually hear them typing on a keyboard even though it's a, a uh, MPEG-4 running in the background. And the big benefit there is if you pre-record it, you know it's going to work every time. Yeah, I have a question about that. Is uh -huh. that something that you should um, that you should be upfront about, uh, just in the interest of um, you know transparency, or should it just maybe we should just say I'm going to give a demo instead of a live demo? Or I don't know. I just worry about that. You know, it's sort of like lip syncing, right? Like that people will get mad and start yeah. calling Vanilla Vanilla or something like that. Yeah, um, I'm usually upfront when I do that and say I've just left. Dyslexic fingers, and you want to see me <laughs> saying, damn, back, 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 <coughs> damn. Um, some audiences it works, some others it doesn't. Yes, sir? Yeah, I was always told never proceed a demo with anything more than a box book. Yeah, oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Here's another good one for this uh -huh. same topic. Take a lesson with a TV cooking show, and if part of your demo is installing something, have another instance that's already installed that you can cut over to so you're pulling the pie out of the oven and you're not waiting 45 minutes for it to be. Yeah, my, uh, my niece is a caterer down in San Diego, and for a while she was doing a, a Rachel Ray type show on the local CBS station. And what was really great is none of the ovens on the set worked. The uh, electrical code <laughs> didn't work. So she'd have to literally bring in ovens and plug them out in on the hallway and have stuff going. And during the breaks, you'd be running around with hot pans and burning each other and spilling sauces. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mar Martha Stewart makes it look pretty good, but it's not as easy as she makes it look. Okay. Take your outline and write your presentation. And then I tell people, walk away for it for five minutes to a day and come back and say, is this something you'd want to be in the audience watching? Uh, if there's good material in there, Usually, it's a good decision to proceed. Um, if it's the first time you're talking, yes, sir. What about us folks that have sometimes struggled to figure out what the hell we're going to say until about the day before? Um, yeah, that works for some folks. Uh, for most folks, you got to have something before you go in there. I mean, if you change it the last minute, I tell them <coughs> write something down. And you can always change it till you get up there and start presenting. Uh, some people that works, other people it's disastrous. So, um, Also, if it's your first or second time presenting, um, get one of your peers to take a look at the material. Maybe they'll stop, spot something obvious, or maybe they'll say, hey, you can skip over this. This is, this is redundant. You don't need this here. Um, and then ask yourself, does your presentation cover the, de the desired scope? Does it cover the material you say you're talking about? Uh, years ago, I went to a presentation on Grub. I ended up learning more about boot sectors than I ever wanted to do and learned nothing about Grub. <laughs> um, the guy had a half-hour slot that had 68 slides. Um, yeah. Second thing is write your main topics so that if you send it to your mom, hopefully your mom's not a senior-level DBA or a project manager, but your mom can say, oh, you're talking about a piece of software that does X. Um, also, look for tangential stuff that you could eliminate, like the talk about the grub where the guy went off on boot sectors for, for 28 minutes. Um, five minutes on boot sectors would have been okay. 30 seconds on boot sectors probably would have been better. Also, ask yourself, do you have enough time to get through the material? If you have a five-minute slot and, and 10 slides, might be a little much, might be able to carry it off. But if you have a 10-minute presentation and 55 slides, you're not going to get them through them. And sometimes you uh, start working a presentation and you go, gee, I'm supposed to fill 50 minutes and I have three slides. Um, what can I do? Um, usually I tell people to keep it short and sweet <coughs> and then add in more details and examples. 
Now, at open source conferences, um, you all in the audience want raw technical red meat. You want to know the, the great information. You don't want me to show you benchmarks, or you don't want me to show you more than one benchmark. You want to know how it really works and what sort of use cases are there. Clarity. Try to convey things as simply as possible. Think haiku, not epic poem. Uh, after you do the basic convocation of knowledge, then you can really dig down in the details. Um, try to give details with, I call it colorless. Don't put in political spin or slamming other vendors or other presenta presentations or even other op operating systems. Try to be as technical and devoid of emotion as possible. Get your details out there about what you're talking about. If we all start slamming Microsoft, it gets off on a tangent, and we all end up talking about Windows Vista. Not nice. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, content, clarity, color, and carrot. Does anyone remember? There's no females in this room, so. Diamonds, yes. Um, these are the rules for buying, buying diamonds. Um, last thing is, uh, is the weight of your presentation worth someone sitting there for 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes? You know, try to give value for their time. Uh, what you don't want, once again, useless be benchmarks. I've gone to so many presentations where the benchmark goes up on the screen and you look at the x-axis and the y-axis and they make no sense or they've been <laughs> scaled or chopped. Uh, also, unreadable tags are a killer. Try to keep the marketing or the public relations for your project or your piece of software to a minimum. Uh, do not slander, uh, give out FUD, or insult other products. Uh, in my case, I'm often asked to talk about competitor X or competitor Y or competitor Z. Uh, the open source industry is very small and very incestuous, and you never know who's going to be your boss next quarter. And the product you're slamming today might be the brainchild of the guy who's writing your performance for you next week. Um, also, try not to insult <coughs> your audience. Uh, you're not Don Rickles. And don't make specific insult, uh, insults. Uh, if you like GNOME, and you've heard a lot of the folks talk about, oh, there's better window managers out there than GNOME, that kind of jades your experience. Also, um, excessive animations or transitions uh, distract from your presentation. And remember, the audience wants you to succeed. They want you to give them information. You don't need to be overly polished. Great example of that. Uh, you don't have to be the smartest room on the subject. Um, if, unless you're a professional evangelist for a product, uh, it's good to say, I don't know a lot about this. I just know what I do with it. Often, uh, some of the better sessions I've been at at open source conferences are someone who says, I wanted to try X, and I failed. And here's the steps I took, and here's why I failed. Stuff you need or need to do. First of all, your presentation. Spell check. Read out loud to catch grammar mistakes and other <laughs> problems. Um, native English speakers, especially in this day and age, couldn't diagram a sentence to save their lives, but they can hear what's supposed to be proper uh, English. Email yourself a copy to a public account and or Dropbox, put it in Google Drive, uh, someplace where you can get another copy of your, your uh, presentation. A friend of mine had his laptop run over at an airport by one of those out of the way carts, and uh, his presentation was on there and had no other copy. Uh, put a copy on a thumb drive and make sure you bring it with you. Uh, my wife will often call me when I'm on the way to the airport and said, you know the thumb drive you left on your dresser this morning? Did you need that? <laughs> also, uh, host your slides at like slideshare.net or on your GitHub account or someplace similar that people can get to it. Oftentimes you'll run to people and say, hey, I wanted to see your talk, but there's one on the Go language and how to make pretzels with it. And I really need to be in there because I love pretzels. Can, can I get the slides for your talk? Google, Go can do anything. Those folks at Google are amazing. Um, get yourself an account on joined in.
make sure your details are correct. Um, when you claim your talk at a conference, this conference doesn't do it, but a lot of conferences do this so that you can get feedback on your talk. Uh, by the way, take that feedback with a grain of salt. Um, oftentimes the folks who are overly critical miss the point of your talk, and it becomes rather evident. And yes, I did do that, number one on purpose. Okay, so once again, post slides online, join joined in, so that when a conference lists your talk under their list of talks, people can give you feedback. And promote online. Social media is wonderful. Say your slides are up at slideshare.net slash David M. Stokes. I'll put the slide deck up in a little bit. Uh, give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back. If the conference has a uh, Twitter handle, promote it. Copyright. I, uh, I do a lot of uh, presentations with Oracle material, and those slides will have Oracle copyright, so I have to obey the Oracle rules on copyrights and transmission of information. You starting off at a show like this, you don't need to do that. But if you have something that's valuable and you want to share and you get credit for it, put a Creative Commons license on it. Uh, if you want someone to really pay attention to it, put an Apache license or a GPL license on it. If your information is valuable, I highly recommend you do that. Putting no license on there gives you no protection. Now, a slide deck like this, I don't care if you steal the information on it. Uh, some of the other stuff, if you've really done a lot of research on how to do something, you might want to protect yourself. Equipment to have. Uh, dongles. I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the cabling system up here, but you go to a show these days and the old VGA cable isn't there anymore. They, want, they have a dongle for HDMI. Uh, they might have a micro D connector for something else. To bring dongles for your computer to do HDMI, VGA. I'm taking an HDMI cable everywhere I go. Uh, a lot of hotels now have TVs that when you want to run through slides, plug it in there, away you go. Logitech makes these little things. Uh, they're about 28, 29 bucks on Amazon. Uh, batteries last for about six months. Uh, they're nice little slide clickers. Uh, bring a surge protector extension cord. Uh, you never know when you go to talk, you're low on battery and the plug's way over there. Uh, pops up all the time. Bring business cards. Someone might be so impressed with you, they want to type up that job offer and they want to be able to get your address and that phone number so they make sure they can reach you on Monday morning. Uh, if you're, pro if the, what you're talking about has stickers, uh, bring those. Oftentimes, open source projects will hand out stickers to folks who are promoting their stuff gratis. Also bring a notebook and pen. Uh, sometimes you'll need to take notes after your talk. Uh, a friend of mine was talking about C++ and Barney Sustrup came up afterwards and decided to tell him everything he'd done wrong with the presentation and he took notes and it became a much better presentation. Okay, the thou, thou shalt nots. Things to avoid. Chewing gum. About once a month I'll go to some talk and someone will be up there with the gum talking to me and it's very distracting. Unzip zippers. Um, happens sometimes. Nervous laughter. If you're up there and you're laughing every two seconds at something you're saying, it's obvious you're, you're nervous and it's going to make people think you're a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> My boss starts every sentence with the word, so. So today, <laughs> on our conference call, we're going to talk about new projects. So, new projects that are coming up. Noise the hell out of me. Um, I have a big problem with saying, um, so I, I watch myself on that. I have a friend who says, okay, after every sentence to make sure that it's conveyed like an ACK call in a, uh, in a special speaking protocol. Uh, the same guy also asked me to watch him give his first college lecture, and I pulled an all-nighter, and I was very tired, and before he started, I said, if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. If I'm not going fast enough, tell me to speed up. Anyway, I didn't realize he lectured in a monotone. So I'm in the back of the room nodding off. And after 20 minutes, he calls a break and says, what is this? Dude, you're setting me to sleep. <laughs> Cursing. Um, 
As a former stand-up comic, I tell you, a lot of folks just get up there and drop F-bombs, S-bombs, and everything else, and people will laugh. Technical presentations, most people don't want to hear that. Um, try to keep it to a minimum. Try not to do it. There are some people you offend that you don't want to offend. Working clean is better, uh, unless you're talking to the IEEE, and those guys are some hardcore motherfuckers that go for it. Okay, this one. I go to a lot of presentations, and unfortunately I'm running from room to room, and I walk in, and I find out that I missed the acronyms that only two people in the entire world know, and it's used all the way through the presentation. I'm sure that should have been boosted up a little bit. Um, last week I was in a presentation about something called MLE from a project called Grawl VM. I wasn't sure what MLE was, and I thought they were talking about a lady in the room whose name was Emily. And uh, some of the characteristics they were assigned to were rather impressive. Okay, biological stuff. Drain bladder, bring something to drink. Um, if you're one of those folks that needs Xanax or something like that before you talk to a crowd, bring that. Um, if you have worry beads and they help you, drag those along. So just before the start, arrive early, boot up, get rid of unnecessary processes. I use a uh, screen capture uh, software that leaves a big yellow sun at the top of the screen that's very annoying if I leave it up there. Uh, kill off browser tabs. Uh, you might have heard the tentacle porn problem that a, a certain political writer had six months ago. Um, yeah, he claimed his wife told him there was no such thing and he was just looking up, but it showed up on a screen capture. And then plug in and test, make sure your presentation goes. Uh, yesterday I had a problem with the box here that uh, retransmits things for the video feed and we had to work around it. But if I'd shown up one second before the time to start, would have wasted five minutes on that. Okay, when you start, have a title slide. You're, uh, you're not Francis Ford Coppola doing uh, a movie about a guy hiding out in the jungle. You have to have a title slide. Uh, do a short intro with some information about yourself, maybe contact in information. Run your presentation, <coughs> do the QA and repeat the contact information. Now I like to tell people you want to do things the Navy way. Once again I grew up in San Diego and you learn a lot of things uh, just from being around. Tell them what they're about to learn, teach the material, and then summarize what they learned. How many people have ever been on an aircraft carrier? Uh, was it just static or were you on operations? Just visiting. Yeah, just visiting? Just visiting. Um, each of these colored shirts have a different responsibility. Uh, the guys in white move the aircraft. The guys in purple uh, do the fueling. Uh, green do, does armaments. They all have a specific task. I would venture to bet maybe one or two of those guys on that deck are over 20. The Navy takes guys and girls out of high school and teaches them to run one of the most complex pieces of machinery in the world. Now those 20 year olds are managed by senior chiefs who might be 25. Might be. Those folks are watched by warrants and lieutenants who may be high 20s, who are watched by officers, junior officers, who might be all the way up to 33, 35, who are watched by flight commanders and group captains who might be pushing 40. So you take someone, high school graduate, have them work with a multi-million dollar plane, with explosives, jet fuel, and move them around on a deck on a ship that's doing this. Very impressive the Navy does that. And they've been doing it for centuries. Toastmasters. If there's a good Toastmasters group in your area and you think you want to talk a lot, please join them. They have a very impressive program. They do a lot of good things. If you don't have one in your area, there might be another group. Rotary, Lions, uh, some other club might be there to help you. But if you have a Toastmasters in your area and you think you want to do a lot of talking, talking, please join them. Okay, you've done your presentation. What next? Well, submit your talk to other events or other user groups. Look at other topics that interest you. Some of the best talks I've seen are for folks who, um, they do WordPress sites and then they find out they want to program and go. They don't know more than WordPress, so they dig into it and they end up with great presentations. Also, you can organize events. 
Heck, the folks here who were running the show, if you really want to have a lot of fun and miss out on a lot of sleep in a few weekends, they're looking for people to help them out, and they'll teach you all the ropes. Heck, with about five years worth of work, Bill will let you even run the damn thing. Okay. So this was a quick talk on presentation skills for open source folks. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm at the last scale booth on the show floor for the rest of the day. There's my contact information. I'll the slides up a little bit earlier. And with that, I'd like to open it up to questions, comments, and all that. Is the Mac finally booted? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it running. It's ready, okay. Uh, yeah, I started uh, putting stuff away, but um, yeah, I had it running for a little while. Okay. And does anyone ask, why didn't you print out the uh, 3D print the save icon? Oh, no. <laughs> I had a friend who was having an argument with his teenage daughter and told her to hang up the phone. What do you mean by hang up the phone? She never had a phone that was. <laughs> and then I asked, you've never dialed a phone number by putting your finger in a slot and doing that sort of motion. Yes, sir. Um, so I, I did my first talk this morning. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. And, um, and they, didn't, they didn't turn cannibal? And they totally failed to lynch me. I heard all that. <laughs> <laughs> you did check for English comprehension. <laughs> um, I didn't do slides. And, uh, the particular talk I was doing, I didn't feel like they were going to convey much. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so 20 minutes before, I realized, oh, the recording, they're just doing the capture yeah. of the screen. Um, so I felt like the talk went OK. So the recording of it is, is going to be, um, well, it's just going to be static. Yeah. Static screen. Yeah. Um, and then a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. all the video. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just, I was like, I was thinking about the trade-offs there where I, I felt like I wasn't yeah. Talk, but they certainly the yeah. Well, the good news is some French film festival will see that as the best existentialist video of the year and make you a Palme d'Or winner. Uh, uh, <laughs> but it's up to you. I mean, that was your choice. Um, it probably would have been great just to throw up a title slide, say, "Hey, this is what we're doing," and then your contact information. But you made a great choice for your your subject. Now, it wasn't something for showing stuff off to blind people, was it, or anything like that? No. Okay. <laughs> Because sometimes you don't need slides if you're talking to blind people. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe what you could do is that if you have some sort of camera or just use a webcam on your laptop or something, pull that up, pull up a window where it has the feed of the video, just record that. If you think that that's better than nothing, then that could possibly be something that would work for you. Yeah. That's a good idea. By the way, if you ever have a sign language interpreter, sign language doesn't map one to one to English, so you'll be done speaking and they'll be over there gesticulating and. Yeah. It's, it's rather fun. And other times you'll say something really long and they'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So I've heard the name tons of times, but I don't actually have any idea. What does Booth Nazis actually do? What, what are they? Their main charter is to take you from a person who's never spoken in front of an audience to someone who get up and do an off the top of your head impromptu speech on any subject for 10 minutes. Okay. Is it a just an organization that exists naturally, nationally that has Internationally, yes. Okay. And it's free, right, from what I've heard? Um, some chapters charge charge small prices for covering coffee or room rental or something like that. Sure, okay. uh, I'm not a member. I've only gone to a couple of meetings in a couple of places. Um, it depends on the locale, but usually it's, it's either free or low cost. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions that join the post, post master and the chat box at this time? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then if Dennis has a question, he can ask it. Yeah. Yeah. Is the idea like to have a meeting and they'll select somebody who is will be the person to just give a bunch of a good speech? Or I've seen it. I looked into it. I've never okay. actually done it. But I looked into it. They have a little org fairly rigid organization. They have someone who's like the secretary of Hope Hill who has the person who's going to who's gonna give a presentation and they do things for lead, lead people that have to do certain things. And They've been around for quite some time. It is it's pretty yeah. very established. Well, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard about that before. And I yeah. One of the things they'll do is say, Next Tuesday, you're talking for three minutes on um, the North American trade agreement's effect on water buffalo. Okay. And you'll get OK. And I'd be done. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll go out and you'll research and you'll write little three by five cards, you know, what a water buffalo is, what, what NAFTA is. 
and then talked about the effects between the two. But it's, or it's a program where if you are afraid of public speaking, but you have a little gumption, they will walk you through that and get you up so you can go off and talk anywhere. Okay. And they actually have competitions between chapters, so if you're hyper-competitive, mm -hmm. uh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir? Uh, so you said you do like 25 to 40 uh, talks a year. Is that like your main job? Um, it's probably 50% of my job. Okay. Uh, How would you get into that? Well, originally I was hired at MySQL AB when it was a small Swedish company and you had 27 uh, personal days a day, a year, plus national holidays. Um, we got bought by Sun Microsystems. By that time I was a certification manager. Uh, a year and a quarter later we got bought by Oracle and I was ending up at Oracle managing a spreadsheet. Not a, not a great person. So I went off to a startup, um, the CalPont Columnar Storage Engine for MySQL. Uh, Maria now DB now has that uh, in their product. Uh, after eight months of being customer service manager, I realized we had no customers to service. Um, not a long-term career prospect there. And the job on the MySQL community team popped up. Uh, if you're looking for developer evangelist jobs, uh, see me at the booth. I'll give you some pointers from folks who are hiring. Um, it's a lot of travel. It's a lot of talk, a lot of blogging, uh, a lot of going to conferences that are... Uh, may not be at a convenient time for you or your family, but it's a fun job overall. So. A lot of it is just volunteering too. Like at my, at my job, they just put out a call for uh, speakers. You know, a lot of people don't like getting up in front of a crowd, and so will not volunteer for it. Or they'll do it if they're forced kind of thing. So if you have the opportunity to volunteer and it's something that you're willing to do, a lot of times it's a small pool of, of people that they're going to be able to choose from. Yes, sir. I work with the IEEE and we're constantly looking for people. We have about 100 and we're coming back to the list and we're back in June. And we have about 100 meetings a year uh, of, uh, you know, just an hour or whatever we are. Usually all, almost all technical and uh, so we're always looking for people. Now, what's funny is some corporations don't have a formal evangelist program. And they'll grab some of their engineers and throw them up there, and they're wonderful, wise people, but they can't speak in front of an audience to save their life. Um, one of the engineers I used to work with is a wonderful guy, brilliant. He gets up in front of the audience, and all you see is him like this, reading his slides, and it's kind of like a bad Arnold Schwarzenegger presentation. No emotion, no value to it, and when he gets done, he's off the stage because he can't do Q&A. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, a lot of um, folks in the open source world um, who run wonderful projects and all that can't organize a slide presentation. I mean, they can do, they can run five uh, get installations of different projects and all that, uh, be on email lists all day long, but you tell them you're doing a slide presentation six months from now, five months from now, day after tomorrow. They'll put it off at the very last minute and it will kill them. And they get up there and look unprepared and it doesn't work well. Outsourcing your slide presentation. I don't like the slide parts. <laughs> uh, there are graphic artists that will help you. What you were saying about the size of the band and the slide yeah, I was just thinking about that this morning, oh. actually. Like, I need to find a topic where it's not dependent upon slides. And like you said, maybe throw out some contact information, a little intro summary or something, but I find too many of the slides and too many texts. Yeah. It's irritating. Uh, Josh Holmes, who works for Microsoft, who you might see around here from time to time, he does slides with one word up per slide. Mm -hmm. Works for him. But then Microsoft kind of is a <laughs> one slide per one word per slide company. But there was there was one over in G103 uh, yesterday with a bunch of different companies. She's with Amazon now. She did really good. She had a lot of pictures of different things making heart shapes, like candles and, yeah. and lights. And so it was a good, good recurring theme. And it was about you know, talk, talking about open source that you love. So it was a good choice of graphic, too, as well as the presentation. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, speaking of the idea of what you're putting up on screen versus um, 
the actual things that you're talking about, but um, you know, maybe a, a lot more detail than what's actually being uh, put up on the screen. Uh, what's your workflow, or how do you arrange it, the notes that you have for yourself versus what you're putting up for everybody else? Um, some packages like um, Keynote and PowerPoint will, on the screen, actually show up a little picture of what you're doing and then your notes that you can enter at the bottom of the slide presentation. Does the PowerPoint have that? I think it's just the Keynote. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to rig, but you can do it. Um, I don't work that way. I'd rather go through my slides two or three times the night before and know what I want to talk about. I might miss one or two points, but I've seen so many presentations where the people are just kind of reading there that it comes more like a, a bad stage performance. Okay. Um, as far as keeping the <coughs> notes in front of you and avoiding the problem of having your face in your notes, um, is there, do you have any recommendations as far as that uh, while still having something you can reference just to kind of keep you on track? Um, I've seen people do it with, with note cards, you know, one note card per, per slide deck. Uh, for me, that's something else to lose or get munged or, or lose. Uh, it, it depends on what your personal style is. Uh, a close friend of mine actually has kind of like a little Rolodex. Uh, it was a, for those of you who don't know, it's like a bunch of fan-folded cards. You kind of just keep <laughs> twisting it and all that. I talk about technology like Rolodexes, and I know one of these days it's going to be like talking about a VCR. A what? Um, and as far as what you're talking about, where um, some programs have the option to have the notes up on your screen, is, is the idea that um, basically uh, it will tell how your split screen is set up when you have plugged into your HDMI cable or whatnot, and you can designate on screen one, have this, on screen two, have something else? Yeah, that, that's a rough idea. I have folks who will have their entire presentation written out in their notes, and other folks that will just do bullet points of what they want to bring up, and I favor the latter when I do have to do slides like that. Uh, occasionally, I have a slide written by one of our engineers that they can't make it to America for some reason, and I'm doing their slides, and they'll have notes out there like that, and I'll bullet point them. So. Well, if that's it, thank you for coming. Uh, I hope I'll see you all next year here in front of the audience, and uh, thank you for coming. <laughs>